Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Dr. Mark Sims is a hearing loss specialist, and he wants you to listen up. Dr. Mark, thanks for being with us today. Great, Bill. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Now, you've written a book. We, we kidded you in the introduction, but the name of the book is, or the title, Listen Up, correct? Correct. It's uh, Listen Up with the subtitle of a, a Physician's Guide to Effectively Treating Your Hearing Loss. And uh, obviously, you're the physician, but how did you get started in this field? That's what I want to know. First. So, uh, I am a uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor. So, uh, and it, within this the field of ear, nose, and throat, I am an ear doctor. So, I do the E of ENT. <laughs> okay. okay. And so, um, uh, initially, a large part of that is uh, doing medical and surgical uh, treatment for diseases. And so I started about 20 years ago, got pretty busy uh, doing this stuff. And I would see the patients and I do my part. I fix as much as I can. And I'd say, look, you know, you have a hearing loss of aging or you have a nerve loss. Um, you need to go and uh, get some hearing aids and treat your hearing loss. And I, I'd see these patients back over and over again. And they'd come back to me and I'd say, hey, uh, I, you know, it was the time of paper charts. I'd pull out the paper chart. And I'd say, hey, look, uh, here, look here. I said you should probably go and get some hearing aids. What happened? And more often than not, they would tell me these stories where they tried to get hearing aids and they didn't work or they weren't doing what they wanted them to, et cetera, et cetera. So I started asking patients, like, why was that? And I started kind of looking at the literature, meaning the research is why this doesn't happen. And basically, you know, kind of the conclusion is, unfortunately, the current experience of people treating their hearing loss with hearing aids is pretty poor. And so uh, the point of the book is to explain why hearing loss matters, why actually the treatment is oftentimes poor and how to pursue it appropriately. So the statistics are about 20% of people who have hearing loss treat it. And of those, about a third are well-treated, which means about seven to 8% of people with hearing loss have appropriately treated hearing loss. So uh, using, you know, that would be considered an epidemic, right? A, a disease that more and more people have that is not being treated well is an epidemic. And I've learned a lot. Your book is uh, obviously the title is Listen Up, but it's short and to the point, but it really hits at the things that most people would ask. We'll cover a lot of them today. But let me go back in your life a little bit, because you actually have a family reason, which you discuss early in sure. the book for being a sure. doctor. So I am one of six. Uh, my parents had one one girl and then five boys. I think they kept on trying to have another girl, to be <laughs> honest with you. But that all being said, uh, my middle brother was my brother, Robbie, and he had a brain tumor that was diagnosed when he was a teenager. And so uh, this was before CAT scans and MRIs existed. And so uh, one of the treatments he had for this brain tumor was whole brain radiation. And so they were trying to control the tumor that, you know, saves your life, but has long term effects. And so in his 20s, 30s, and 40s, uh, he had a, a progressive hearing loss. And I, I will confess to you, it is only kind of in hindsight do I realize how impactful that really was on him. You know, how he became less connected, um, kind of, uh, you know, a, more irritable and then depressed and, you know, and frankly, disconnected from me. Um, uh, I have regret, but my brother and I were estranged when he passed. And I think a large part of that had to do with the hearing loss. And so in hindsight and reflection, you know, I, I think about how much it affected me and I think about other people and how much it would affect them if they had one of their loved ones go through the exact same process. And so, yes, it's a personal issue as well. Now, Dr. Mark, uh, chapter one of your book, you start out with, uh, in fact, I think it's the title, Why Most Don't Work. And then you say, hint, it's not the hearing aid. That's so correct. Can you tell us what I never even, even thought going into it? I assumed hearing aids work. But what uh, what is the problem? Well, you know, fundamentally, uh, you know, it's the approach to treating your hearing loss. So kind of what I tell patients is, is there's a difference between getting hearing aids, which are physical objects that you put in your ear and getting your hearing loss well treated. And so what I mean by that is getting your loss your hearing loss well treated involves what I consider four steps. One, you need to get a hearing 
treatment that meets your needs, right? So uh, the example I give is when you go to a car dealership, if a family of four shows up and the car dealer says, here, I'm going to give you this two seat convertible, that doesn't meet the need of the family. Well, the same with the hearing aids. Somebody who's in an assisted living facility um, whose family comes to see them every two months does not need the same hearing aid as somebody who wants it to stream to their iPhone and uh, is in high level meetings. So that's the first thing, it has to meet your need. The second is, is it needs to be appropriately physically fitted. And this is something people don't always understand. Sometimes people get pretty little hearing aids that don't do what they want. So the microphone, I mean, the speaker is always in your ear canal. Sometimes the speaker is also in your ear canal. Sometimes this, the, uh, I'm sorry, the speaker, the microphone's above your ear. Sometimes your ear canal's open. Sometimes your ear canal's closed. Sometimes your ear canal's partially closed. That affects performance. And, and so we see people who don't have the right physically configured hearing aids commonly. Third, and this is really an important thing, is your hearing treatment needs the appropriate prescription. So you need the hearing aid to be adjusted for you. Okay. And so there's two things. The companies that make these hearing devices, they have algorithms or programs that help them be fitted. Does that make sense? So they punch in your hearing test and it generates an algorithm or a, a program or a prescription. That prescription has two factors. One is it's generic, meaning it fits the generic ear, generic length, circumference, width, and shape. I don't know if I've ever seen that ear canal, but yours probably is not that canal built. And so it, the ex example I give is a water pipe, right? If you have an eight inch water pipe with water flowing through it, if you make it 12 inches, it flows slower. If you make it four inches, it goes faster. So the size of the pipe or the size of your ear canal affects how much sound goes down it. So you don't want a generic pro prescription. You want a custom prescription. The second thing is, is one of the most common complaints that people have when they get hearing aids is this, it's too loud. It's uncomfortable. So the companies have given people prescriptions that get them to the most comfortable hearing fit, meaning they don't want people to complain saying it's too loud. Well, that often is not the best hearing prescription. Does that make sense? So they are under prescribed for comfort. And that's one of the reasons in our organization will oftentimes slowly bring up the prescription. And then the last, which is the most important, the fourth thing, this is really what matters is you need to demonstrate that the prescription meets your need. Okay, so I'm gonna use blood pressure as an example, Bill. If you had high blood pressure, right? And your blood pressure was, let's say 210 over 110, right? If your primary care doctor, one, gave you a prescription and never checked your blood pressure again, you'd think they're a quack, right? We right. all know you should recheck it. The second, so your prescription should be measured. So there, we have little devices we can put in your ear with your hearing aid present the sound and measure that the prescription in your hearing aid is giving you what you need. So we're validating that. And that doesn't happen a lot of times. So the example I give to people is, is if your doctor treated your blood pressure and your blood pressure is now 160 over 90, you could say your blood pressure is treated. It's just not well treated. And so many people who have hearing aids think their hearing is well treated, but it's not. So the hard part is, is what do you, how do you know what you're not hearing? So people don't realize that they're not hearing as best as possible. And a lot of them say, these don't help me. I don't like them. It wasn't worth the money. And so they just put them in their nightstand drawer because they didn't go through those steps. So that's the difference between getting the commodity called a hearing aid and treating your hearing loss well. Does that make sense? Now, that was a great, and, and I've, I've got a whole bunch of questions. You might see me writing as you're answering. Um, you use the word prescription and right away when I hear prescription, I think doctor, which that's what you are, the, the, the doctor. Right. But I've also seen in the world and I, I'm that perfect demographic, as we talked about, that you're talking to over 70 and uh, someone who probably should be at least investigating. Sure. Um, when I hear the word prescription and I also I go to Costco and other stores and I see sure. a hearing section. Sure. So. Does that mean I should be and everyone should be starting out with a doctor or is someone else qualified to give a prescription? Well, you know, I mean, I think there's good care everywhere and bad care everywhere. I hate to say that, but the, that's why I give kind of a stepwise thing. And so I can't say for sure that that's the case. Um, you know, the, the some of the issues become when you discount something. So I'm going to use a different example for a big box retailer, right? So it, it, this shirt I have is a 15 and a half 33 shirt, right? And if I go to Costco and I need this shirt and I go into the bin and they don't have it, what do you do? <laughs> you probably get the next best size. Or you don't get it, right? Or you don't get, yeah. <laughs> right. and, and so if you go to Nordstrom, 
and you want this shirt and they don't have it, what do they do? They look it up in the computer and they have it drop ship. Now, I, I, you know, people can choose to get their clothing wherever they wish. But my point to you is, is that service component costs more. Right. And so when you discount, oftentimes what you discount is the service, not the device. When you discount the shirt, it's the service that's being discounted. And my whole point to you is the service matters. So we all know this. Think about home repair. Right. If you want to build a brick wall in your backyard. Right. You and I can go to home, Home Depot or Lowe's and get bricks and mortar dump in our backyard. But fundamentally, the outcome of that brick wall is going to be directly related to the skill of the mason who puts that wall together, not the bricks not the mortar. And so that's the concept. Craftsmanship matters. So I'm not saying there's not craftsmanship at places, but that's what people are buying. You're buying the craftsmanship of the person, not the device. And that's why I don't say to people, go get hearing aids. I say to people, go get your hearing well treated. And there's a difference. And I, I, get I see that. Yeah. Everybody's getting their mail. Once you hit your age bill, I suspect you get plenty of mailers saying, Hey, come get <laughs> hearing aids. They're discounted. I mean, when people, you've been checking out my mail, I can see right, that. I just, I just know. <laughs> No, but w- when people sell to you on price, what are they discounting, right? I mean, if a painter is sh- giving you a cheaper paint job, he doesn't get the paint cheap anywhere unless he waters it down, but that's a whole nother issue. But <laughs> w- w- what is he discounting? He's discounting the labor, right? The skill of that, right? And so one of the things is I say to people, they say, well, how do I get my hearing person to do it right? And my answer is, is you know, let's use a painter's example. Say somebody's painting your dining room and you want the walls painted and they get paint all over the floor and ceiling. I mean, the answer is, what do you do? Well, you really don't tell him how to paint right because he's already demonstrated to you he doesn't know how to paint right. You have to go get a different painter, right? I mean, (laughs) that's the point. Like, it's the skill of the people and people think, the companies want you to think it's the device. It's not. It's the care that matters. Does that make sense? We we want our audience to know if they're just tuning in that they're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is Dr. Mark Sims. He has a book called Listen Up, and he is a specialist in hearing problems, and he is what's considered or called an ENT. Is that correct? Right. And so actually, I tell people I uh, my actual term is called a neurootologist, which I say is a tongue twister. <laughs> which is just the E of ENT. So I am a subspecialist. So I take care of just ears. That's all I do all day. And Dr. Sims, would you tell us one, where the book is available? Listen up, where can we find that book? Get it. And is there a website? Yes, there are two, two places. You can go to uh, listenuphearing.com and you can get the book there. And it's actually less expensive there than it is on Amazon, or you can go get it on Amazon. Uh, it's, and you know, if you want to check it out, you can read the Amazon reviews. Uh, it's got great reviews. People are really receiving it well. We'll ask you again later in the show for that information. So if someone didn't get it or thinks their father, their uncle, their brother could use it. uh, I've learned some tips and you gave us some good uh, numbers in your book. You said, I think um, people over 70, they have a 50 percent chance that they're suffering from hearing loss. That's That's one out of two. If my math is good. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Your math is right. Which means highly likely you are if you are, uh, you know, you or your wife, if you're married, have uh, one of you has got it. (laughs) <laughs> and it keeps you then that's the one who's yelling at the other one did you hear me and this what and, well actually uh, w- one of the things that's interesting is sometimes spouses will come in and say well he has hearing loss and i don't i said well maybe you have hearing loss and his is worse and that's actually very <laughs> common right so people normalize to the least bad ears in the house or the good ones right? I- i'm laughing because i know i'm the one blaming my wife and uh, i know it should be pointing back at me so yeah. uh i'm definitely guilty of that so go get a couple I- hearing tests both of you go and get OK. Yeah, that, that's a good way to celebrate an anniversary. Um, <laughs> no, do it on a different I, I day. In, <laughs> I read in your book that many people buy them but don't use them. That to me was shocking. Why is that? Well, I guess uh, let's use glasses as an analogy, right? If you put on glasses and you didn't see any better, how long would you how, how long would you wear them? Oh, definitely. OK, right. they're, so they're, just, gosh. they're not effective. Right. And that's why when I say two out of three of them are not fit right, that becomes the issue, right? That they're not giving them what they want. And so, and then the other issue is, is, is you know, uh, hearing aids are rehabilitative, not restorative, right? And so uh, if you lost your leg, okay, the, 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 the restorative thing to do would be regenerate your leg, right? And that's like something that Spider-Man movies are made of or something like that, but it doesn't really exist at this point, although science is working on it. So the, the best rehabilitation thing you can do is get an artificial leg, right? And that's what hearing aids are. They're not perfect, but they're much better. And if you don't have hearing aids and you, it's a similar to lost your leg, it's like hopping up and down on one foot 
right? You're working really hard to ambulate or to move around and you're working really hard to communicate. So my point is, is it's the, the best option we have available currently. Um, Dr. Sims, when I uh, think of hearing aids, first of all, I don't think they're painful. If, if I understand correctly, no. I didn't see that mentioned. So that's not something we should fear. Um, what should we really expect to pay or be charged that's fair for, I guess you'd call it the, tr the examination, the hearing aid, the treatment, however it's divided up. And is this covered by insurance? So there are a couple of things, uh, you know, a lot of that. So when I, one of the first things I talked about was what your, what we would call your listening lifestyle is like what your need is. And so it's similar to cars, right? You can start with the basic model and you can go all the way up to navigation, leather interior and all of the bells and whistles. And so hearing aids are the same. So you're probably going to go anywhere from, you know, $2,500 a pair, well up into, you know, just below $10,000 a pair, dependent on you want what you want in the devices and what level of service you want as well, right? So now the other question becomes about insurance coverage. So when Medicare was founded in the 1960s, hearing aids by and large were sold door to door by the same people who sold Fuller Brushes, Encyclopedia Britannicas, and Rapogo Globes. And so <laughs> when Medicare was adopted, what it says in it, it says Medicare shall not pay for hearing aids. So there is a law, a statutory prohibition that prevents Medicare from paying for hearing aids. So it currently does not cover hearing aids. Now, many people will say, well, but I have hearing aid insurance in my Medicare supplemental. So they really, you know, this is a subtle difference, but there's a difference between a hearing aid benefit and hearing aid coverage, right? So coverage means we take care of your problem. Benefit is we pay a certain amount. Right. And so there are hearing aid benefits where they'll pay, you know, a thousand dollars a pair or two thousand dollars a pair. And so really what that is, is it's kind of a discounted program where they send you to certain people to take care of you. So the example I use uh, in Arizona, it's very common when you sell a house for there to be a home warranty. So, um, you know, where you can get stuff fixed. Right. And so the way a home warranty works is you don't get to pick the tradesman. In other words, if your toilet breaks, you don't pick the toilet nor the plumber. Does that make sense? Mm, yes. And, and it, it, it's kind of the same with the hearing aid benefit. You get sent to somebody and they pick the hearing aid. And so, uh, you know, that works for many people and that's fine. The thing that I'm always concerned about is, is making sure that the hearing treatment meets your need. So for instance, if somebody comes to us and they say, you know, their insurance says, well, we're only going to pay for the bottom level hearing aid, but they actually need an upper level. I have a concern about under treating their hearing loss. And so that might be why a lot of people aren't happy, right? Because they're not getting whether, well, I mean, if you want to go zero to 60 in a car, I'm not a big car guy, but if you do in like, you know, four seconds, you're not going to do that in a Dodge Dart. Okay. Right. So, so if you want a certain level of performance, it's going to cost you a certain amount. Right. Does that make sense? And so it, people no, it definitely does get underperformed by based on that benefit, which is the same. You know, if you have a nice toilet in your house, but the home warranty people come, they go to Home Depot and they buy the cheapest toilet and put it in. So you might not. I mean, if you have a high end Kohler toilet, you might get, you know, the Home Depot special. And that's not getting what you really wanted in replacement, if that makes sense. Now, if, can anyone just go in and say, I would like a hearing aid and, and I'm being overly facetious, but if they have three models, I'd say, give me the one in the middle or do they come to someone like you first or should they, and do they need a prescription? That's what I think there's, there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, you know, what, something that's coming is what are over the counter hearing aids and there's actually internet based fitting, uh, you know, a lot of some people in my field will say the sky is falling like this is the end of the world. Right. And my take is, is anything that gets more awareness, anybody that, that gets people to acknowledge and to treat their hearing loss is a good thing. That's my take. And so I want more people to be aware. And so these these things like entry level hearing aids are for people with very mild hearing losses. And you know what? Maybe that's the right answer. Treat it that way. But then people progress. It's not like your hearing just stops degenerating, unfortunately. And so eventually they need 
the care that's more specialized, right? Does that make sense? And so it's no, absolutely no. And and so, you're, so, you're a good educator, <laughs> right? So, so, so my point is, is I think it's great. You know, you know, you might try and say like, hey, you know, maybe I have a hearing loss. Let me do an online hearing test. Let me see. Let me see what these devices do. Your risk is relatively low, but ultimately, you know, the thing that really breaks my heart is when people say, well, I spent a lot of money and it, they didn't help me. And uh, you know, that buyer beware, right? That you know, you want to go to a place where you're going to get helped. And that's why I give those four steps. And so that to me is the worst scenario. People decided to invest in their hearing and it didn't turn out the way they wanted. So that's where if you're willing to invest and you want to hear as best as possible, you know, for me, hearing is about your grandchild's birthday. Hearing is about a chuckle. Hearing's about the little joke at the dinner table or when you're out at a restaurant with friends. That, that's what hearing's about. And when you start missing those things, you're missing life. And I've learned that from your book, and you made a very good point there. Dr. Sims, once again, we want our audience to know if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Bill Horan, but the person who you want to listen to today is the man who wrote the book, Listen Up, Dr. Mark Sims, S Y M S. S-Y-M-S. Dr. Sims is an ENT, and I think that's for ear, nose, and throat specialists. Correct. He's a medical doctor, so he knows what he's talking about. He's written a great book. Dr. Sims, would you tell us where we can get the book and how we can learn out more if you have a website? Sure. You can go to www.listenuphearing.com, and you can get the book there, uh, or you can go to Amazon. It's available there as well. So it's available at both places, and there's further information at that website. My office practice is W www.azhear.com. I'm in Arizona, so it's azher.com. And there's a lot of educational materials there as well. And, and it is, it's, it really is an educator. As I was reading it, I'm saying, oh my gosh, this is stuff I didn't know. I'm sure it'll apply to our audience also. Um, if we are hearing you today and, and our audience, someone says, okay, we have to do something. I'm going to take dad or my brother or my wife. Do we start out, is it best to go to our family doctor? Should we get a doctor with your designation or should well, we just go to anybody who says, I'll help your hearing? <laughs> I, I think you need to get it measured. So you need a comprehensive uh, ear examination. So you, I would recommend going to uh, your local ENT and having that start with them because they will also look at your ears and make sure there's no wax or anything else going on. So that would be my recommendation to start with your local ENT. And, and again, because most of us are not familiar with medical designations and ENT is the doctor we want, the three initials. Ear, nose and throat. Ear, nose and throat. That's who we're looking for. Right. Or the other, the formal name is otolaryngology head and neck surgery. I'll go with ENT. I, yeah, I think most a, of our audience will follow that. Correct. Correct. You or, mentioned it. Yeah, you mentioned ahead. in your books uh, that some of the effects of um, hearing loss might surprise us, and they certainly surprise me. So can you tell us a few of those? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, there's the just the social implications, frustration of your 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 loved ones, uh, disconnection and things like that. But on a medical side, um, you know, I think one of the things people aren't aware about is untreated hearing loss has a very strong association with memory loss and dementia. And so there was a uh, landmark uh, study group. Lancet is like the British version of the New England Journal of Medicine. And they did a, uh, a paper, a sentinel study on dementia. And so what they were looking at are what things can you do to minimize or to reduce your risk for dementia? And some of them are what are be called non-modifiable risks. Like you can't change your genetics, right? You can't change that stuff. But in your life, the most modifiable risk you can change is hearing loss. And so they weighted 100% risk of dementia and 9% of that was associated with hearing loss. So just to give you an example, quitting smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure are all 2% or less. So it's a huge factor. It is by far the most important thing you can do to remain independent, stay socially connected to your loved ones is to ensure you don't have a hearing loss. And if you do, to get it well-treated by far. And uh, obviously, you're helping us do that today. You you mentioned, I think, too, in your book, which almost should be obvious, but you don't know what you don't hear. That's correct. And so one of the big things that used to really floor me was people would come in, they'd have a severe hearing loss. And I'd say to them, I'd be like, Bill, you, you have a severe hearing loss. And you'd look at me, I mean, straight in the face, and you'd say, no, I don't. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And so there, what I figured out through talking to patients is this, there is a fundamental difference between communicating effectively and hearing. And so hearing is a part of communication. Communication really has three parts. One is hearing, 
Okay. And so if you have a hearing loss, you don't just throw up your hands and say, I can't talk to people. I'm no longer going to talk to people. <clears throat> the two ways you compensate for that. One is what we call speech reading, which is looking at people's face, mouth, and lips, because you can tell the difference between wife and wipe. And that's actually something we develop when we're babies, right? Because we all hold a baby and we talk to them and they don't understand. They understand the facial expressions. Uh, this And one of the things I will make is that as we're, uh, you know, the wearing of face masks has made it much more difficult because people have lost that portion. I never thought but of this, that, but this, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the second thing that really people do is context. And what I mean by that is once you know what people are talking about, your brain automatically fills in the blanks, right? And so there are a couple of things. One is, is that's why at the beginning of a conversation, when people don't know what you're talking about, that's why they say, huh, or what, because they're not tracking the conversation. The second thing is, is when we talk to our immediate loved ones, although we like to think we have really vibrant conversations, I always say to people, they're very operational. When are you going to work? When are you coming home? What are we having for dinner? Did you pick stuff up? When it's limited to those topics, it's pretty easy. You pick up the phone from somebody you don't know what they're going to talk about, and maybe they have a, a, a they don't speak American English. You're out of luck if you have hearing loss. So my point to you is, is people are terrible at assessing their own hearing because they don't realize what they're not hearing. Go get a measure. Just like it's like saying, I don't have high blood pressure. I feel good, Bill. Right? Like, well, no, get it measured. That's the answer. No, absolutely. And you've taught me that definitely. Now, I, I read in the book and, and I'm asking you, um, when I see someone with a hearing aid, and it's, it's actually hard these days to see because you almost have to be up to their ear, which is right. a strange position and kind of passing social boundaries even before the pandemic. But is Except there a if you're in line waiting to check out, right? There That's you go. The only are, are, are people like are afraid this is going to make them look older or uh, not disfiguring, but yeah. is there a stigma? I, I think there is. Uh, I think there are a couple of things. One is, is, is um, ear level technology is becoming more acceptable, right? With Bluetooth, earbuds, all of those things, more people are wearing things in their ears. And when you really think about it, Apple earbuds are bright white, like they want you to see them, right? And so it's, it's like a flip of the whole concept. I think the other thing people don't realize, and I say this to people, especially when they have a more substantial hearing loss, people already see your hearing loss. They know you don't hear. Now, they might not say anything to you, but they already see it because what do people, when you say something to somebody and they don't understand what you're saying, you don't go, oh, they have a hearing loss. You actually think they're not that smart, right? And so yeah. I would much rather people think I have a hearing loss than think I'm not smart. So it's it, uh, that to me seems like a worse stigma than the fact that you have technology and people get frustrated. They'll say, you know, if you don't understand, they'll say, go get your hearing treated, right? So for your family, it shows you care because- the big thing I say, so the reason I wear reading glasses is because I can't see, right? The reason you get hearing aids is because your loved ones and friends can't communicate with you. So it's a different mindset. You get hearing care for everybody else. You get glasses for yourself. You've really been so informative today. And last quick question, should the person themselves expect to be going or is it usually your wife or your brother who takes you or your neighbor who says, you haven't heard anything I've said for three years, I'm taking you to so-and-so? I think, you know, uh, one of the things I would say is if your loved one tells you you have a hearing loss, you probably do, right? Because, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, the, you know, the reason we love our loved ones is because they're the ones who are brutally honest. The reason our loved ones drive us crazy it's because they're the ones who are brutally honest, right? <laughs> but, but they tell you the truth. Um, we always want you to bring your significant other because they will be able to better account to you when you're really not hearing because, again, you don't know when you're not hearing. So we get a much more fruitful outcome in terms of bringing you to the table for treatment if you come with your significant other because they're going to look at you in the face and say, no, you don't understand. I have to repeat everything all the time. And I say to people, hearing loss is like baseball but harder. What do I mean by that? Baseball, you get three strikes. Hearing loss, you get two. I'll give you an example. Right, Dr. Say, Sim, I'm sorry, we were just running out of time before okay. we wrap up. People just, will only repeat things twice. That's it. <laughs> tell us the, the title of the book. Listen, Listen up. up. It, Fair enough by our guest, Dr. Mark Sims, S-Y-M-S. And I'd also ask for that website and where we can get the book. www.listenuphearing.com or Amazon. It's been wonderful. You've been so informative today. I'm going to go right out and I do what you've been telling me because I, I think I'm in that group and I better get moving. I'd like our audience to know that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Bill Horan. We ask you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to 
success.